Hello boaters, today we're going to turn this into this. Let's get started. Your scenario may be different, but my scenario is due to a giant speaker. So the first thing I need to do is remove Today's goal is to seal up this hole, make this panel complete again. Then you can use it as a complete panel or drill a new hole that fits your new speaker. I'll be installing a round six inch marine speaker and this hole is way too big. So let's get started. Step one will be to create a fiberglass backing using fiberglass mat and fiberglass resin. My fiberglass of choice will be fiberglass mat and it looks like this. The first thing I'm going to do is get some top of the line wax paper from the dollar store <laughs> and I'm going to put it down under the hole. This isn't going to provide complete and total protection because again it's from the dollar store but it's going to help. I have a very small C-clamp holding this thing in place for me, mainly because I can't find a bigger one, but this one will do. I'm going to take a scissor and cut the mat to the oval shape of this hole. And now I'm going to cut a second piece to be my second layer. There you go. That's going to be our two layers. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's going to do. Time for fiberglass resin. Yeah, I make enough. Who wants to have to touch this disgusting can a second time? There's probably an exact science for how much hardener, but a good squeeze is how much I'm going to use, and it's going to work. Taking our cheapo brush, stirring it up. And here we go. Get started. You might have to kind of paint a little bit kind of hold it down and paint a little bit just to kind of get it going but once it's on you're gonna just dab it I'll show you of course because I'm the coolest so right now we're just kind of getting it on. Yeah, it's not going to be the neatest, but this is on the inside. You're not going to see this part of the panel. So all I care is that it functions. I don't care terribly how neat it is. If you care, feel free to do it in a more careful manner. So now we're going to just dab, keep the brush real wet, real wet, and it won't really stick too much. It'll stick if it's too, too dry. And if the mat's too, too dry, it'll stick. So get the mat a little bit wet, then just dab like this, and you'll be able to continually soak the outer portions of the mat without getting the mat stuck or moving. Because if you brush too much, the mat will drag around. There you go. There's your first layer. It's actually pushing down into the hole and I want the opposite. So we're gonna flip this over after. Now we're gonna put our second layer down and do the same. Again, make sure it's good and wet and paint a little bit kinda 
around the edges so it stays put. If you start dabbing right away, you might drag it. Wear some gloves. It helps if you can touch a little bit. So now everything is nice and wet. You'll see how the matting is staying put I'm using my dabbing technique. It's not dragging out of place or anything, right? It's just staying put. Now we're going to flip it over. And do the same thing on the other side. Take off our wax paper. And did you see how it sunk in? I don't know if you could see how it sunk in, but that's what I want. So now I've stood it up, and I'm just gonna dab it a bit from behind to make sure it's all good. And I'm just gonna correct it and dab it just to get it right where I want. Because I want it to be not too deep, but I want the backing to be just below this round cutout because I'm gonna fill this up with body filler and sand it. So we don't want the indentation of the fiberglass to be so big that I have to use tons of body filler. But we also don't want the fiberglass to be above the cutout so that I can't fill it. So we're just gonna mess with it. It gets stiff as it starts to cure and you can set it so it's just the tiniest bit below this cutout. Now I let it cure. Okay, now that the patch is hard, I'm going to lay it down and fill it with Bondo body filler. Now, I'm sure there's an exact science to this, but I don't care. I'm going to put a nice blob of body filler into my cap here. and a nice blob of hardener and stir it up. If you want, you could add some white pigment to help the color match. I don't really care because it's an old boat and an old panel. I just want it to be functional and complete quickly. <laughs> Okay, now there it is. It's ugly, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to sand it down. Just make sure you have enough to kind of be a little bit above the hole. So when you sand it, it's level with the rest of the panel. But don't panic because if it's not, or if there's air bubbles or gaps or little indentations, you can add some more filler and sand it again. Let's wait for it to cure and sand it. Okay, I'm gonna sand it with one of my favorite tools, the Ryobi One Plus Orbital Sander. Love these because all of them use the same interchangeable battery. I'm gonna use an 80 grit. And I'm wearing a gas mask. You probably should too. Now that it's almost done, I'm going to take the 80 off and put a 120 on. This is a less aggressive sandpaper to help make it smooth and nice. After you finish sanding, you have a nice flat flush surface. 
and we realized that there were some air pockets in there left a few divots so you're going to whip up a small batch of the stuff here and just put it over those those openings let it cure and then sand it again don't go too crazy or else you'll be sanding <laughs> a lot more again one of my favorite tools the Ryobi one plus bench blower So there it is, nice fresh flat surface. Next step is to cut out a new hole for the new speaker. Okay, so time to cut the hole to mount the speaker. I've got a cheap old workbench here. I got this at a garage sale and I'm gonna use it so that I can place this down and cut. I'm gonna cut using a Roto-Zip spiral saw that I got for 10 bucks at Goodwill. But you could use a Dremel with a cutting bit or a drill with a cutting bit or whatever you have. Okay, I made a rough sketch of my circle and I'm gonna cut it out. <laughs> You also might want to consider some protective eyewear. I'm going to wear my face shield. I got this for $2 at a garage sale, and you probably can too. But there's the hole. Cut out of my awesome new fiberglass and body filler. I've made my own little puck here. Okay, there's the hole. Let's pray it fits. And it does. Now I'm just gonna drive some screws clean through the fiberglass. Not too long, you don't want sticking out the back and scratching you up. So if you want, you could even use little bolts, but I'm gonna use little screws because I've got the clearance for that. Okay, I'm using DeWalt Max Fit number one Phillips screwdriver, brand new because I don't like to mess with old crap. And I'm using one inch number eight stainless screws so they don't rust and you should too. Gonna put some firewood starter underneath to raise it up <laughs> that way the speaker can fit flush because otherwise it'll be popped up <laughs> it wouldn't be a terrible idea to make pilot holes but i'm not going to do that <laughs> Put them down really loose at first and then tighten them gently because your speaker casing is likely plastic. You don't want to crack it and there's no need for it to be that tight. Just a speaker. And there it is. From ugly hole with ugly speaker to ugly patch and beautiful new speaker. Let's go put it on. So there it is, swapping out an ugly speaker for a brand new speaker and filling up and recutting the hole to make it match. Also, for those of you who are paying attention, yes, I did two panels. Speaker, no speaker. I will be cutting this and placing the exact same speaker in there. But for those of you who don't want to replace a speaker and just want to replace a hole, that's how you do it. However, make sure you use proper tint for color matching. Let me know if you've done anything like this on your boat, how it went and what your process was in the comments below. Catch you next time. You're on Greg Adventure. I'm Greg. And this was today's adventure.